So with that, I want to introduce uh, my uh, our partner in crime with the ICF uh, since uh, 2014, since its start, um, Daniel Hall, who is professor um, at the Chair for Innovative and Industrialized Industrial Construction at ETH Zurich, where I also had the pleasure of spending some time a while back. And uh, um, Danny really uh, brings together um, wonderful insights into the challenges and opportunities in industry and technology and business models and, and uh, really putting those together um, to give us a vision and a path to yeah, achieving greater things in our projects. So Daniel, the um, floor is yours. Thanks very much, Martin. And in seven years or seven forums of organization, I've never quite given myself a speaking slot. So I thought that uh, this year I could I could do that. And especially because we were talking about accelerating change for industry transformation. And that's exactly what I, I think, and, and I'm quite passionate about the role of academia and how um, we play an important role in doing that. Um, so let's jump into it right away. And when we talk about uh, academia, I think I could simplify this uh, into two very simple terms. It's research and it's teaching. Um, so we have a responsibility from the research side, and I think for industrialized construction, um, the question is, what might the future of industrialized construction look like? And that comes from a technological, a computational, and organizational perspective. And then I think equally as important, it's the teaching side. And that question is, how do we empower the next generation of students to lead us there? Um, and so that's my presentation today will be in these two parts, uh, research and then teaching. Um, I thought maybe I could, I, I, I had ambitions to give an overarching view of a research agenda across industrialized construction. And then I had realized I gave myself 10 minutes. So uh, why don't I just stick with what our group is doing? Um, there are others doing some great things, um, but I wanted to present our research agenda for industrialized construction. And unintentionally, or maybe subconsciously, it matches with uh, many of the themes that we've structured our, our, our presentations uh, and our themes around in this forum. So um, we see a research agenda around sustainability, around parametric design, around digital fabrication or, or, or extension of 3D printing and uh, around new business models. Um, so let me just jump into these three very quickly. I won't have time to go in detail, but I want to give a holistic framework here so we can understand where I th think things go. Um, First, it begins with resource efficiency. And I'm convinced that industrialization is one of our best opportunities to go towards a more resource efficient uh, built environment. Uh, and so we recently have a paper led by um, Firhiwat Kadir um, about a framework to think about resource efficiency. How do we conceptualize the opportunities for resource efficiency across design, manufacturing, um, assembly, transportation, and also service? Um, and then moving forward, we heard uh, earlier um, uh, yesterday from Felix Heisel about um, the idea of, of material passports in industrialized uh, construction. And I'm convinced that, uh, that if we're going to see an intersection of circular economy and industrialized uh, uh, in the built environment, industrialized construction will be the best vehicle in order to do that. Um, we, it, with an industrialized supply chain, we have much greater knowledge of product. Uh, that we don't see in the typical ways that we organize for construction. Um, and so we see opportunities around uh, creating material passports um, that can carry, pass, and store this product data through an industrialized supply chain. Um, and we're working towards a material passport ontology so that we can start to, to conceptualize and, 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 uh, and carry this information. Second, it's around parametric design. And this is the idea of configurators and kit of parts. Uh, we say that mass customization is simply uh, a kit of parts and the configuration rules which unite that kit of parts in our recent paper. And moving forward, we really see the opportunity towards more fabrication aware design tools and thinking about the tiered levels of configuration um, or adaptive kit of parts. So we start going towards par parametricism and more nuance in our understanding of fabrication aware design tools. And this has been led by Jean Peng Cao in, in our group. Um, we also are seeing a, a push towards digital fabrication. And, and while myself particularly, I'm not a, a specialist in technologies like 3D printing, um, we do see the opportunity for the project and design management of these new technologies. Uh, we argue that 
um, that these new technologies require new ways to integrate and innovate within project teams. Um, and so we need to figure out the right project management structures and design management strategies in order to support the implementation of these new systemic level innovations. And uh, Ming Shan Ng and, and Conrad Grasser at my chair are, are thinking about the future project delivery models or design management strategies for bespoke digital fabrication. We do see projects being an important part of the future test bed of innovation for 3D printing or digital fabrication, um, mass timber, these kinds of new technologies. And finally, uh, it's the opportunity for new business models. And some of our past work with uh, Imperial College London and, and some ongoing work um, really looks at the new business models for offsite construction, how we're seeing that emerge around the world. Um, and then moving forward, we have a, a new PhD that we're really excited about, Alexander, who's looking at uh, specifically new business models around robotics um, and, and, uh, and digital fabrication. Um, and maybe that's a future topic for industrialized construction forum is, is about in situ robotics and how we see those coming to play. Um, but we find this to be equally important because if you remember that disruption in an industry is not just new technologies. Uh, new technology is simply evolution of an industry. Every industry will do that. But disruption happens when you have new technologies and you combine those with new business models. Um, I liked what Ian said about uh, yesterday about uh, layering CAD on top of 2D drawings. And um, I think we, we risk that same mentality if we just layer prefabrication on top of the old design bid build tender low bid uh, approach. So we really think that there's a, a need for new continuous longitudinally integrated business models. So uh, I don't have time to dwell very long on this. Uh, you can take a screenshot, uh, but this is my vision for a, a future research agenda for industrialized construction. And maybe I could operationalize this with uh, just a very short description of our new research project. We call it seven day house fabrication aware generative design, um, where we can reimagine the whole system in consideration of these four areas above. Um, we take some inspiration from the three-day car program, which was a research program um, in the 1990s, early 2000s uh, within Europe, where uh, car manufacturers were feeling a lot of pressure from places like Toyota that were, uh, you know, taking some of their sales. And they wanted to deliver a made-to-order or mass-customized car in, in three days. So they mapped out the supply chain. They found that the average time for a, a car delivered is, was 40.3 days. But, and I would argue the similar for construction, the problem was not production. That was merely 1.4 days of time on the factory floor. And there was some time for distribution and, and kind of logistics, but the largest period of time, 34 days, was really about getting customer orders, the, you know, you could say the, the design that the customer wanted and linking that to the fabrication and supply chain. And this was a quote from that project saying that processing the order from the customer to the assembly line was the single greatest bottleneck in the whole supply chain. So from that motivation, and I'm fully aware that uh, I, I think the car analogy is useful, but it has definitely some limitations. Um, we thought, can we generate a fully customized home design in one day while maintaining supply chain continuity for fabrication and delivery in the next six days? And um, we call this the seven day house. Um, if you look at the traditional design process, it's very bespoke and not optimized. If you look at the traditional mass production paradigm of industrialization that we failed in the 60s and 70s, it could be very industrialized and efficient, but no customer understanding or customization. Now we can't fabricate a house or we can't design a house in one day. We have generative design tools that do this, but they're not linked to any kind of fabricated supply chain. Um, and we do have mass customization, but we still haven't linked those to new ways of generating and new customer journeys for, for design. Um, so I'll leave it at that. We're going towards fabrication informed modeling. And uh, this is a brand new research project funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation. In fact, we have a PhD and postdoc position that's uh, available in the next one week before applications close in case I've sparked your interest. Um, okay, so then let me say, let's talk about teaching the next generation of students, the education piece of this. Um, I like this picture from Yerker. Uh, he, it's, it's the class when I took industrialized construction way back in uh, 2013, I believe. Um, there's Yerker, there's me. Um, some of us founded the first industrialized construction forum in this picture. 
Um, and what, what Yerker often shows is that, you know, he was a, a guy came from Sweden, he came to Stanford and was teaching industrialized construction. Um, but the spread of those ideas to many others in that class um, is one of the real advantages we have in academia, where we have a, a very diverse meeting of minds outside of our kind of own markets and bubbles of, of construction. Um, and I like to ask this question, if we believe that industrialized construction has potential for disruption, then how should we prepare the next generation of AEC to think disruptively? And with my last uh, two minutes here, I'm just gonna give my four quick opinions on, on how that happens. Um, first, I think it happens through a focus on entrepreneurship. I think we've been very weak at the academic level on teaching about entrepreneurship. Now, I am a bit biased because I came from Stanford where they say it's just in the water, you're, you're just automatically attuned to this entrepreneurial mindset. Um, but I do think we have this opportunity to, uh, to think outside of the existing system and question some of the, the structures and institutions that we exist in AEC for industrialized construction. And so in my industrialized construction class, um, we introduce the, the, the students to um, entrepreneurial thought leaders, and we also ask them to come up with a final startup idea for industrialized construction. Second, we really need to engage students with fabrication. Um, we need them to understand what does a construction factory look like? What does a five axis CNC machine do? Um, how automated are today's factories or not automated are they? Um, and the best way to do that is to go to your local kind of industrialized construction factory. Um, they are, they do exist and they probably will welcome you on a tour. So um, I think that's the next challenge. Third, it's about teaching the next generation of students new roles. Um, this was a quote from one of my research uh, papers, we need an experienced senior manager with a hybrid background between an industrial engineer and a construction engineer. And then they kind of laughed, that person doesn't exist, right? So if we're going towards an industrialized construction future, um, what will be the roles? Will it still be architect, engineer, and contractor? Is that what AEC will mean? Um, in my class, I purposely asked the students to have different uh, job titles in their in their groups in their in their entrepreneurial teams. So we have a role of product development, we have a role of technical systems, and we have a role of strategy and market. And this gets outside of the existing roles about what an architect does and what an engineer does. It also helps reinforce our idea of building as a product. Finally, I think we really have to get into this idea of a new curriculum. Um, I know Stanford is right now offering their their um, new curriculum on construction robotics. Um, I also know from, from some of my colleagues at USC that they have a, a new program with, which really looks at this design and uh, production integration, which is quite exciting. Um, in my class, we started with 20 students three years ago, and, and this next upcoming semester, we, we're full at 75 students and I have 60 on the waiting list. The next generation, I feel, is really hungry and excited about um, this view of what construction could be. Um, so I'm a bit over time, and I'll just summarize here very quickly, these things, you can have a look and uh, take a screenshot if you wanna carry it on for, for later. Um, otherwise, I'd like to say thank you very much. Um, you can find me on, uh, on Twitter here and uh, I'll be very happy to um, put some links up uh, because there's a lot of references there and if you wanna get any more resources, you can, you can take a look. Um, so thank you very much.